Hello and welcome to another episode of the Troy Francis podcast with me, Troy Francis, Monday 13th of July 2020. Welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be talking about ruthlessness and lack of emotion and why these traits are actually ones that will make you very effective in life, even though that seems counterintuitive because they're normally deemed to be negative and something to be avoided. So I'm going to be getting into that in a minute. Uh, First off, updates from me. Well, you know, basically at the Grindstone here in London, I am currently just starting work on a new book project, which I'll reveal more about soon. But in the meantime, if you haven't already done so, it's worth picking up Renegade Dating Domination, which is my collection of essays and articles about dating, the dating scene, uh, game, etc, etc. It's all of the best articles and essays really that I've done over the last five years. It's the only place where that material is now available because a lot of them were on uh, Return of Kings, which uh, has now expunged a lot of those old articles and some of them were on my own website as well and those articles have been archived there. So if you want to read all of those pearls of wisdom from me from the last five years then click the link below, head over to get Renegade Dating Domination. It's two volumes, 400 pages worth of material, 150 articles about all aspects of game, dating, mindset, self-development, all of that good stuff. Anyway, on with the show. So I wanted to talk today about the idea of being emotionless or at least being in control of your emotions. And the reason for this is because I did a couple of tweets last week that performed pretty well in terms of impressions and people engaging with them and stuff. So I'll read them out to you now. The first one said, ruthless psychopaths are the most successful people in life. (laughs) Uh, very nice. Ruthless psychopaths are the most successful people in life. And the second one, which was kind of similar thematically, I think, I said the man with zero emotions will always win. All right. So I wanted to talk around this notion of being emotionless. And indeed, what is a psychopath after all, but somebody who is at an extreme point on the spectrum of being unemotional. When we think of a psychopath, obviously, we often think about somebody who is a serial killer. We think about Hannibal Lecter and characters from fiction of that kind, American Psycho, Patrick Bateman, of course, and so on. But as you are probably already aware, the psychopath is not just somebody who goes around murdering people. Uh, In fact, those are obviously very much in the minority. There are many people in society, in respectable positions in society, who would diagnose as being psychopathic. And if you've followed the literature on on this, I mean, there's obviously a lot of scientific um, data and scientific research available out there. Uh, there are books uh, by people like John Ronson has a very, very good book about about psychopaths uh, and other people of that nature. Um, then you will be aware that it's quite widely acknowledged that psychopaths tend to be very, very successful, particularly in fields like business, politics, uh, maybe professional sports, um, any very competitive field basically psychopath so people with psychopathic tendencies tend to do very well now excuse me mm, beautiful sparkling water so look i'm not going to go into a big clinical definition of psychopathy but when i think about it i find the most useful way for me to think about it is somebody who is supremely lacking in empathy or at least I guess there's a sliding scale and on the extreme side of that scale you have somebody who has absolutely zero empathy whatsoever and then it gradiates down incrementally from having a bit of empathy to having less empathy to having no empathy, okay? So somebody who is uh, psychopathic doesn't care about other people or has very little regard for other people in terms of their feelings, their well-being, what they think, what they feel, etc., etc. They are very much focused on themselves and what they want to 
get out of life, what they want to get out of whatever the situation that they find themselves in is. People who are unemotional, and of course, lacking emotion or having, as I say here, having zero emotions, that is not a clinical uh, designation. That's just a, well, it's something I made up for a tweet. I mean, <clears throat> and as people have said, you know, I had a few people coming back on that tweet. We were talking about some of this stuff on Rule Zero, actually, at the weekend, and people will come back and say, oh, well, you know, it's not possible to have zero emotions or something like, it, it's no man can completely eradicate his emotions and so therefore the man has to learn to deal with the emotions uh, rather than to seek to get rid of them entirely. And yes, of course, I know that. I'm not an idiot. Everyone on the panel on Rule Zero knows that. When I said the man with zero emotions will always win, that w wasn't a prescription. There was no value judgment there. I wasn't saying that was a good thing. And I also wasn't saying the implication was not meant to be so therefore you should rid yourself of all emotions because I agree that is not possible and neither do I believe that that is desirable either, um, even if it were possible. So, you know, uh, don't start posting those kinds of complaints underneath this because I get it. I'm totally on board. I understand that... Um, you know, it's not possible to just completely eradicate emotions. And, you know, that's not a good thing to do because we are human beings. And, and, and look, being a psychopath is not a good thing to be if you want to have a balanced human life. You know, if you want to have a pleasant experience uh, on this planet where you care about people and people care about you and you experience love and you experience affection and all of these different things, then... Quite clearly being a psychopath, being somebody who lacks empathy, or indeed being somebody who's eradicated all feelings is, is just not a good thing, even if it was possible to, to, to do it at will. But the fact remains that if you could do it, how successful would you be? Now, I've always thought about this in terms of sexual desire. Okay, when I was a bit younger and obviously full of testosterone and chasing ladies all over the place and having a very prolific time of it out there in the dating trenches, I would often think to myself, and this was throughout my 20s and my 30s, I would often think to myself, if only the monkey would get off my back, if only I could be rid of this desire, this this over almost overpowering desire to meet girls, to date girls, to have romance, to have sex, all of these things. If only I could get rid of all of that, how productive would I be? Because that, that whole sphere of dating and game and all of that kind of thing was so all-consuming that it really <laughs> took up all of my time for probably 20 years, you know, 20 years of being um, a libertine, if you like, of being somebody who was really dedicated to pleasure, dedicated to physical pleasure, dedicated to sensual pleasure. That was my highest value, if you like, for a very long time. Uh, and an all-consuming passion. I mean, really, an all-consuming addiction, if you want to use that language, um, which I know is contestable, but still. That was such a huge focus for me. And I would often think, even, you know how they talk about Alcoholics having a moment of clarity where they're in the midst of their, their drinking experience. You know, they are... And suddenly they have this moment where they see the reality of what they're doing. They see the truth about their situation. Sometimes I would have that with the Venusian arts, with dating, with libertinism. I would suddenly come to and think, God, what the hell am I doing? You know, if I wasn't doing all of this stuff... I could probably be, you know, inventing some amazing technological platform or creating some wonderful piece of writing or writing the, the great uh, British novel for the 20th, 21st century. Uh, but instead, because I was so tied to my 
desires, if you like, uh, and I was so compelled to follow them, did I achieve what I could have achieved materially? Arguably not, you know. That's not to say <clears throat> that I didn't do anything during that period. And of course, what has come about as a result of that period is quite a big body of work, really. I mean, I've written, I've got these 11 books about dating, about game, uh, which are in the Renegade Dating Blueprint collection. Again, link below. <clears throat> and of course, I've got all of those essays in Renegade Dating Domination. So I've collected all of this writing that I've done around this subject, around the subject of, uh, well, you know, sexual desire, romance, dating, the adventures that one has as a result, uh, you know, and, and how to do that. And of course, in order to try to help other, other people, other guys, I've also formulated them in the sense of writing about, okay, this is how you do it, or at least this is what I did. And these are the lessons that I learned. And maybe you can take those lessons on board yourself as well. So, you know, it hasn't been, I would say, a a complete waste by any means. And, and anyway, listen, I mean, you know, you should never have regrets in life. I don't think you should look back and say, well, I should have done this or I should have done that because you did what you did. You experienced what you experienced. And that is a great thing. And that is the fabric of your life. You know, the fabric of my life will be marked by that, by those experiences. You know, I mean, those aren't the only experiences in my life. That That's not the only, that's not the only narrative that I can pull out of my life. But it's certainly quite a big one, you know. And that was all driven by that desire, that desire for... Um, sex, that desire for excitement, that desire for sensual pleasure, for romance, uh, for excitement, for all, all of these different things. And that is, those are feelings, right? And I think when I put out those tweets, when I said the man with zero emotions will always win, I mean, emotions is a bit of a woolly word, isn't it? What does emotions really mean? And I think when somebody sees a tweet like that, they're going to think what he means by that is that you should be very, very cold and unloving and uh, perhaps ruthless and brutal with people. I, I imagine that's what people think. And of course, yeah, there is, there is something to that. But I would argue that an emotion, lust is also an emotion. You know, the desire to date is, is, is emotionally driven, okay? The desire to be in a relationship is emotionally driven, okay? Lots of things are emotionally driven that aren't all about being a stone-cold alpha kind of character. Boredom is emotionally driven. Laziness is emotionally driven. The desire to go and meet a girl and take her on a date and then have sex with her is emotionally driven as opposed to staying at home and working on your tax return or, or writing uh, a new course to sell to the market or create or doing coding or something like that. You know, one thing is a, a logical decision, a logical activity that is based in a decision made to improve your situation in life. And the other is emotionally driven because you want to enjoy the pleasure of sex. You want to enjoy meeting somebody new. You want to enjoy hanging out with her, spending time with her, whatever. So the point is that emotion is not just one or two things. It's not just like, oh, the guy who, uh, who doesn't love anybody, the guy who's very cold, that guy will always win. It's also the guy who is able to put aside pleasure, pleasure. The guy who's able to say, I'm not going to give in to that emotion of wanting to go out to the club tonight to get that validation or to get that ego boost or to get that sexual pleasure, that sexual reward if I meet somebody that I'm attracted to. And it's also the guy who is able to say, I'm not going to give in to the emotion of boredom. And this has application say, if you are building a business or if you are somebody like me who creates content all of the time in order to 
make a brand. So, you know, I could be sitting here and say, well, I don't really want to record this podcast because, you know, it's a bit boring. I'd rather be like, uh, I don't know, out in the park or, you know, going for a run or going for a swim or whatever. But you have to, and I'm not saying I find making these podcasts boring because I actually really enjoy it, which is a great thing about doing your own, doing work for yourself, if you like. You're able to select tasks that in the main are pleasurable, are things that you enjoy. But my point is, if I was going to find this boring and then I gave in to that feeling of boredom, would that make me more successful or less successful? Would that mean that I was more on the path to getting the things I want or less on the path to getting the things that I want? Well, clearly it would mean that I was less on that path. You know, I was on a path taking me away from what I want, which is to build up my brand, to create great content, to build a relationship with with you, the person who's listening to this, and to do all of those things. So the fact that I haven't given into that emotion of boredom today or that emotion of laziness, let's say laziness. I mean, laziness is part physical, yes, if you're really tired, but it's also kind of emotional. You know, I mean, there are... I mean, it doesn't happen very often now, but there are days when I get up and I think, oh, do you know what? I could, I just wouldn't mind staying in bed and just like, you know, chilling out, watching some rubbish on TV and whatever. But, and it will be easy to give in to that because that is basically an emotional desire, isn't it? It's based in emotion. It's in the emotion of, I suppose, ultimately a desire for comfort, Right. You know, I could say, well, I I just want to lay in bed. I just want to chill out, watch TV. And that would emotionally make me feel comfortable, relaxed, not stressed, perhaps, for a time. And those things are, are pleasant. And they are more comfortable, perhaps, than having to get up, get dressed, work out a topic to make a podcast about plan out the podcast, record the podcast, put it up, maybe have it criticized by people, maybe have haters coming into the comments, etc, etc. So there are sort of, I don't want to say negative feelings surrounding creating a podcast, but you know what I mean? There are, um, there are certainly potential pain points there, which I would avoid if I were just to stay in bed. So, but because I didn't give into that emotion, because I don't get, I, I've, have managed today not to give in to the emotion of saying, do you know what, I just want to take comfort over the potential discomfort of taking action, then I'm making this podcast and we're all here. And I'm very glad that we are. I hope you are too. But you know what I'm saying? I hope. Emotion is a multifaceted thing. And okay, yes, if I put out a tweet that says ruthless psychopaths are the most successful people in life, that is clearly a little bit more shaped by my reading about, say, CEOs who have psychopathic tendencies, who have managed to go through the corporate jungle and cut their way through because they pushed everyone else out of the way and they've been very successful as a result. So yes, coldness and... um, Unfeel, having a lack of feeling for others, that can be very that those negative traits can unfortunately in themselves lead to success. But as I say, it's not just that. And we again, we were talking about this on Rule Zero at the weekend. If you haven't watched the episode, it's on my channel. So just look back uh, to the last video. You'll see Rule Zero. You can watch the episode there. But um, we were actually talking about this on on that show. This thing that emotion guys it, it's guys think that it's it's either the big it's the big emotions you know it's like oh you've got to be you, you know you can't love you can't feel jealousy you can't feel pain you've got to be an automaton and yes if you could eradicate those things then the likelihood is you would pass through life more easily but it's not just that it's also about these these little niggly things it's about boredom it's about frustration you know I mean, I've heard it said that guys or people who are successful in business tend to be people who are able to withstand doing very mundane tasks for a long period of time. Because I think in any business, and even in something like 
what I do, which is in the main very enjoyable and very fulfilling, there are also less interesting bits. There are also uh, some bits of, of admin. There are also some bits that are quite mechanical that I have to do, like, for example, um, planning and uploading content and things like this. You know, it's not always a barrel of laughs. You know, I'm not always like seeing from the rooftops when I'm doing this stuff. But I've had to train myself to do these slightly, these things that emotionally I probably prefer not to do. But I've had to train myself to do them anyway uh, in order to make a success of this. So if you were able to turn down the volume on all of these different emotions, and if you were able to be purely logical in your approach to life, you can see how you would be more successful as a result. And actually, this is something that Robert Greene talks about in the new book, or his latest book, which is, I think, called The Art of Human Nature. So I read it a while ago now, actually, some months ago. But one of the first things that he says at the beginning of that book is that those people who are able to live on a logical basis or a cerebral basis rather than an emotional basis are going to be, in the main, more, accept more successful than those people who don't. Because emotion is incredibly powerful. And as I've, I hope, illustrated in this podcast, there are all different sorts of emotions. And human beings are much more led by emotion than we are by logic. You know, that's why when you do a presentation, for example, if you do a PowerPoint presentation, it's always better to use images rather than charts or text because if you put up a, a, a crop sorry if you put up a graph two-thirds of the audience just switch off because it's a bit boring and it's a bit abstract and most people well I say most people a lot of people don't really like f numbers and they don't really like facts and figures some people are more attuned to them than others but I think in the main images and storytelling and this is why everyone bangs on about storytelling the whole time. Storytelling is the most powerful thing. You know, emotion is th the most powerful thing for humans. And we have to find ways sometimes to lessen our emotional responses and to live in logic as opposed to, to emotion. And when you think about it, that's a very masculine archetype isn't it that's how men are supposed to be men are supposed to be logical and they are supposed to be led by that rather than by feelings but i think in reality i think guys are very much led by feelings you know i certainly have been in many many instances throughout my life you know but sometimes you have to take a step back and you have to think, well, what do I actually want? You know, what what outcome do I want? And then you have to think, so if I want that outcome, then what actions do I need to take? And then regardless of how you feel, you need to take those actions anyway. Now, bringing this back to dating and women and so on, approach anxiety is based in emotion. You know, I mean, you are in the coffee shop and you see a girl that you are attracted to, somebody you'd like to get to know, somebody you'd like to talk to, have a conversation with, and you feel those feelings of fear. You feel those feelings of anxiety. You feel those feelings of fear, uh, a desire to go, to go home and play Minecraft or whatever. And that is emotion. You know, that is, and that emotion is holding you back because sometimes, for many guys, all the time or a lot of the time, that emotion will prevent you from 
taking the action, that emotion, that emotional response, because that's what it is, it's not logical, it's emotional, that emotional response will stop you from walking up to the girl saying, hey, I was just standing over there and I saw you and I had to come over and say hi because you look really nice. My name is Troy. How are you doing today? Very, very simple. You know, it's a very simple action, but you are prevented from doing that because of emotion. Okay, that emotion overrides what would logically take you nearer to the outcome you want, which in this case would be a date or whatever. So that's a really good example of a situation where you have to essentially man up, really, and make a decision that you are going to place the logical in importance above the emotional. In other words, you're going to just do the action anyway. Because logically, listen, if you want to get a date, how are you going to do that? Well, pos- you know, you're going to do it by approaching a-, a girl in some way, introducing yourself, having a bit of a conversation, and then proposing a date. You know, you, you can't get round those components. You're going to have to do those components in some way. Yes, you can do it online. But even then, you, you know, you're, you're still going to have to man up and you're going to have to put yourself out there online. But in face to face, and I would argue that face to face contact is absolutely key to dating, even in 2020, you know, you have to think, well, what's going to take me nearer to my end goal of getting a date? Well, it is going up and talking to a girl. And even though emotionally I shy away from that because I feel fear, I feel anxiety, I feel embarrassment, I feel less than, not good enough, I feel concerned that she will throw a drink at me (laughs) or whatever it is, then yes, that that emotion is there. Those emotions are there. those Those are pressing in on you for sure. So you acknowledge that. You say, yes, I understand. I have these emotions and that's okay but I'm going to choose to ignore those emotions and I'm going to take the action anyway. And do you know what? So many times when you just take the action, things go better than you ever thought they would have got. The nightmare scenarios that you dreamed up about, oh, she might slap me around the face or everyone's going to start laughing or whatever, don't actually end up happening. They were all in your head. They were emotionally driven. You've got to try and stay in reality. That's the key thing, really. You've got to try and stay in reality. And by the way, that goes for any consideration you have about dating, about the dating marketplace and so on. You've got to look at things clearly. You've got to look life steadily in the eye and try to be as coldly analytical about it as you can and then make decisions based on logic rather than what you feel and you know it can be hard but you have to see things as they really are and then you have to have the courage to take the appropriate action so i hope that that's helpful i hope you understand what i mean i think ultimately Facts, sorry, feelings aren't facts, okay, is a really good saying that somebody said to me many years ago, and I've always held on to that. Feelings are not facts. The way that you feel, yes, it's very real. Yes, it can make you, well, make you feel things, obviously. It can feel like it's, it can appear to be influencing your behavior, but just because you feel a certain way, that is that doesn't affect the reality of the situation okay so for example say you were going to go bungee jumping right and you are hooked up with the safety uh, wire and everything else you feel very very frightened to jump you feel very very frightened of that big height and you're worried about what's going to happen when you jump and so on and so forth. But logically, the wire is secured. 
you are perfectly safe. Hundreds, thousands of other people have done this before. They've all been fine, okay? So your fear about making that jump is, yep, it's very real to you. Yep, it might prevent you from even making the jump. You might get back in the plane or whatever it is and uh, or back on the the bridge or the tower or whatever it is and say, no, I'm not going to do it. It might prevent you from taking the action, but it doesn't in itself, it's not in itself factual. It doesn't mean that the activity of doing the bungee jump is more dangerous inherently. The activity of doing the bungee jump is safe. I mean, okay, there's a margin for error, but let's say 99.9% .9 safe because they have secured the wire. Loads of people have done it before. They have regular checks on the equipment, etc., etc. So it is, to all intents and purposes, safe. Just because you feel afraid that it isn't doesn't undermine that fact, okay? So your feelings are not facts. They are just almost like a colored lens that gets put over your eyes when you look at a particular thing. And what you need to do is to say, okay, I feel afraid, but you know what? I'm just gonna do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway, as the wonderful Susan Jeffers said on the title of her book of the same name. All right, I hope that has helped. I hope you uh, get some food for thought from that and maybe you can start to apply that in your own life. I'm going to leave it now because I've got to do a webinar for Body Language Mastery, so I'm going to get going. But do please hit subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the red button, subscribe, hit the notifications bell so that you see all my videos when they come out. Uh, if you're listening to this elsewhere, thank you very much for joining me. Do please go over to YouTube and just subscribe there because I put loads of content out there for free and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And yeah, uh, do get Renegade Dating Domination if you haven't already. The link is below in the description. And also get on my daily email list. I send out a free article pretty much every day of the week, Monday to Friday. So jump on board with that because it's a great way to keep in touch. And you know, if I get deplatformed, from the entire internet tomorrow, then I'll still be able to get content out to you. So there you go. With that, I'm going to get going for now. I will speak to you again very soon. Bye-bye.